what I wanted to do was take you on a little bit of a journey for how we as farmers sort of go through the night. So more of a story really about how, sorry, I'm not sure what's going on. There we go. Um, Cause it's a really unique role as a farmer. And at certain times of the year, sort of we see night and day, it's quite an unrelenting task really as a farmer. So sometime night and day. And I just sort of wanted to present about how as farmers we cope with that and our animals behavior throughout the night. So I wanted to talk about this sort of undisturbed world. Sorry, if I can get this to behave. Okay, we're back in business. Um, so as we enter night on the farm, I feel like a weight's often lifted. So gone of the tasks of the day, um, but we make way for darkness and peace to ascend. It's often a feeling of taking a deep breath after a physical day. Although life never stops on the farm and invariably we enter the night to care for our animals, there's always this sense of calm at the end of the day. And um, sometimes the bringing of night causes worries for us as farmers, for those young left unprotected by their mothers. But I often feel this is a matter of trust, trust in our animals and trust they will defend their young. And also trusting that when we have an undisturbed ecosystem, that healthy lambs will be left undisturbed as alternative food sources are in abundance. And I think that's something that we can sometimes miss, we can miss these links in our, our ecosystems. But then there's also this other side where there's this sort of darker human nature within it. And it's also a time of worry from fellow humans. Now, there's significant theft on farms and night often leaves things exposed. And I think as humans, we often feel exposed. We don't, sort of our senses are heightened. And I recently, because we've been lambing and calving, I headed out to the shed late at night, um, sort of about 2 a.m. I think. No, it was earlier than that, 11 p.m. And as I was heading out, um, torches were shining through our orchard where our young ewes and lambs were. And they were started to bleating and they were calling. So quite unusual behavior from the animals. I could see these torches and voices. And actually my heart started beating and I started to worry about what was sort of happening and um, sort of tried to silently call my husband from the bedroom window. But then I heard the squeal of brakes and it was just in fact a nighttime group of um, mountain bikers out enjoying the, enjoying the evening. But I think there's definitely sort of a sense of um, forbearing sometimes and worry around the night. So I sort of wanted to start with as the night draws in, and um, so when the evening bird song is heard and the sun sinks below the clouds, our animals behavior often shifts. So the final lambs that have been frolicking with their mothers return back to be close and the calves, they gather into a crash setting. So they're often sort of with one mother or a few mothers surrounding them. And we also observe that different groups of our cows sort of gather together in almost friendship groups. So in our case, our breed of Dexters and our shorthorns sleep separately so they graze together very happily throughout the day but at night they sort of turn into two very distinct herds and as a farmer we often carry out late final checks of the day and this is this incredible time where we're wowed by bats hunting over our heads badgers trundling along their path or the call of a tawny owl and it exposes this whole host of wildlife that is often unseen by those tucked up inside. And it gives us a unique view into the world around us. I recently saw our resident barn owl during this time as I went to gather the goats from an old bar and it silently passed over our heads, something I wouldn't have known was there if I hadn't been out at the time. And then I really wanted to sort of talk, touch on animal natural behaviors. So, I've just come through lambing and calving where the majority of animals gave birth at night this year. And I must admit, I didn't overly enjoy that as a farmer, as a human. It's really tiring and it adds layers of complexity if there's issues, particularly with the cows. Um, but actually the behavior of our animals is really strategically planned by them. And they enter labor in the cover of darkness 
and then welcome you in a new day with a newborn, allowing the strength, the newborn to gather strength throughout the day. And actually this is shown when they're left undisturbed. Um, this is what our animals are most likely to do. And when I speak of disturbance, actually this can be something as simple as us as farmers feeding our animals can change their natural rhythms. So there's actually papers being written on how you can feed animals to minimize nighttime birthing. But actually for me, I feel that now I've observed my cows, which have been left outside undisturbed by a human routine, and they've been allowed to carve to their own rhythm. We've seen this adjustment in their time of birth and the same with the sheep. And though, yeah, tricky for us as a farmer, but kind of wonderful that we're allowing them to exhibit this behavior. And often at night, you'll hear calls in the night from animals. And this is actually a key way for them to communicate in the darkness. So, you know, as a farmer, we'll hear the bark of the vixen or the bleating of the ewe to call another one together. Maybe it's a warning or just to rejoin the flock or the herd. And then also grazing drops during the night. And this allows them time to rest and ruminate for the day ahead. And something that's really important to be able to see this natural behavior is building trust with our animals. Um, it's really important that they remain undisturbed when we check them. So I do go out and check them in the middle of the night when we're carving. So I use my voice to tell them it's me, which they recognize, they know who I am. And actually when they hear me, they stay lying down and they stay very undisturbed. And I can sit out with a head torch and watch someone carve and just occasionally with a flash of the head torch, like this cow is here. So she's lying down, carving undisturbed and I would just flash my head torch to see her, how she was progressing. And then I wanted to very briefly touch on light disturbance covered in the last week. And I learned a lot from it. But um, so the plants and animals depend on Earth's daily cycle of light and dark rhythm for their behaviors, um, such as reproduction and um, feeding and sleep and protection from predators. And as humans, we continue to disturb this. And I live in this tiny hamlet of Horner where you wouldn't think we would get much light disturbance. But actually, you know, light shines out from a toilet block. Um, from our barns, you know, the red glow of my heat lamp is impacting and there's this pink glow on the horizon from the local town. And it, you know, it has a significant impact on our wildlife, yet we are a dark sky reserve. So I often wonder how significant it would be in other areas of the world. And then um, my husband often jokes at me because he'll find me in the head, in the shed with a head torch on. Um, I don't like to use the large barn lights. It causes a lot of disturbance to those in the shed. And we bring our sheep in for lambing at night. And I often find this slows down their natural lambing process if I'm in there disturbing them. So we try to use, leave them undisturbed and I check them by camera or the sweep of the head torch, ideally. And then sort of in the darkest hours, I call this sort of between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. It just feels like we're giving in to the night. And so when I go out at night to check my animals at this time, it feels incredibly peaceful. So the noise doesn't travel up from the road. The lights don't illuminate the landscape. And there's this sense of surrounding ourselves in the night. And when the moon is bright and when we're walking through the night with no torchlight, it's often this immersive, peaceful experience as a farmer. Because when you initially rise from bed, like when your alarm goes off, you feel really grobby eyed and stiff limbed. And knowing you need to move to check your animals, it can feel like this really hard act to climb out of your bed. Um, but as you step into the night air, which often sort of brings this great chill to you, it kind of fills you with fresh air and actually heightens your senses. So it's, this cold air almost feels like it awakens us as human. And then as morning breaks, so as the darkness gives way into daylight, the dawn chorus signifies to the world it's reawakening to the daylight, sort of hustle and bustle, I call it. Um, it's often my favourite time of day when a new day dawns 
and the whole day ahead of you've got the whole day ahead of you but it's still really peaceful and you still are seeing the world you almost feel like you're alone in it and this is also really when we get grass growth which is obviously really important on a farm and because it's taken all its energy needs during the previous day and it processes during the night to then grow at dawn so i think we all often feel this experience when we wake up the world seems brighter but actually that could just be from the fresh fresh growth of our plants and then i wanted to talk about the impact on us as humans and being a farmer so i took this or my, i got this picture taken because i just this was in the middle of lambing when i'd had a couple of nights where i had hardly slept and for me, it just shows how tired I am. And I'm actually hiding behind a piece of wood so I can watch a sheep that didn't want me to see her lambing. And she would stop every time I saw her. So I'm hiding one side of the barn to view over. Um, but it really captured my tired eyes, I think. And just, we push our bodies through exhaustion and mental turmoils as farmers. And sometimes that can really take its toll. We need sleep to rest as humans and recuperate. But when we're faced with our role as farmers, um, we don't always we don't put ourselves first we put our animals at the very front of everything we're doing and this can really take its toll on sort of our physical and our mental health and it's a real struggle sometimes to work on limited hours sleep and that sort of links in with our farm safety and this is something that is really important for me particularly as a farmer with two young children is that during this time when we're working on a few hours sleep, we can make mistakes. And that's something I think as a farming community, we need to maybe learn to ask for help more. So when we reach our, to something I've worked on, when I reach my point of absolute exhaustion and I think I can barely operate, you know, I turn to my family or I turn to a friend and ask them to come and help me and help me on the farm to do some physical jobs or maybe allow myself to catch up on a few hours sleep. Because I think we need to give ourselves time as humans and remember that we're not designed to be awake for 24 hours and we're not being the best farmer if we are that tired. But also, I wanted to just touch on the sort of mindfulness that when you're awake at night, alone in your shed, it also allows a time for a reflection when you're not disturbed by, you know, social media or you're not disturbed by the goings on you've got nobody to talk to and it allows us sometimes to reflect and sort of plan in a really peaceful way. And I just wanted to touch on relaxation, the positive side of night times for farmers. So we can actually, when we're not lambing and calving, um, farmers offer, so sort of night time offers us a chance to rest and recuperate after long days. You know, we often can't meet up with friends in the day, but at nighttime, we can see our friends and our family without that pressing need of jobs to be completed in the daylight hours. And it can be a really isolating job. So sort of these trips off farm in the evenings can be really essential ways of speaking to others and sharing ideas. The Exmoor Hill Farming Network offers, often offers talks during the evening at times when we can actually all get together. And this is really essential for sharing ideas and pushing farming methods and just actually taking time for us. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that sort of journey or story of life as a farmer at night um, and the impacts on us. So yeah, thank you very much.